Hi everybody, Kimberly and I am so excited. We have for our music and talk series coming up August 6th a discussion that's going to happen with Tim Arnold of the Bridge House. But leading up to that, I wanted to give Scott Medina, who is a sweet chanting friend of mine, a chance to share more about the Bridge House and about his inspiration. I'm standing here in front of their brand new cafe and marketplace from the Community Table Kitchen. So I'm going to turn it over to Scott so he can talk to you and you could learn about the Bridge House. Great. Hello, All hello. Right. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Okay, well, since it's just me here, I can take the mask off for a moment. Hi. That's great. We can see that gorgeous smile. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Good to see you. I wanted to invite Scott to share, first of all, his personal story in relation to the Bridge House and what inspires him about being a part of the organization. Mm. Well, so Bridge House is focused on serving people who are experiencing homelessness here in Boulder. And we have a lot of innovative ways that we do that. Um, but I guess to address your question of what inspires me behind that is, you know, I, the way I like to put it, I, I oversee our volunteers in the organization, and the way I put it to our volunteers is all of us have a passion item. You know, for some people it might be helping with the environment, other people it might be domestic abuse, other people it might be animals. Uh, for me, the thing that always pulled at my heartstrings was witnessing people on the streets experiencing homelessness. And even as a young kid, I can remember that always impacting me. And so when I had the opportunity, you know, a couple decades ago now, to start helping out run uh, this essentially a soup kitchen dinner program called Community Table, uh, I really jumped at that and thought, wow, that would be a wonderful way to serve people and, and really get to experience what it's like one-on-one -on -one interacting with people rather than from your car window as you pass them by. And so that kind of started me along this journey and I've found it very inspiring to connect with people on, on a real human level. Uh, and so I've done various things you know in the organization since that time. Uh, we've now uh, transformed to become called the Bridge House for several years come up with many new programs but still it's always that passion to be there for people who are on the streets and learn about them if they're suffering if they're just having a hard time today if they're maybe not having that hard a time at all but they still appreciate a, a good meal you know what whatever angle it is uh, not to make assumptions but find out really where they're at in their life Thank you so much. And there's probably many people watching that aren't really familiar with what the Bridge House does, what its foundational mission is. So can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. Well, you know, there's a lot of agencies who are serving this population. And Bridge House started by focusing a lot on emergency services. So things like day shelter and, and meals for people and case management. We've really uh, transformed over the past half dozen years to now focus on uh, employment program. It's a work first program called Ready to Work. And this is really exciting because this is a program that literally takes people off of the streets and puts them back to work and housed again. But it's not a quick fix program. This is a year long program. So it's really an integrated system to get people you know, if they're dealing with addictions or different things that are challenging when they're on the streets, this is a whole year to kind of sober up and get working again and feel what that's like. We start them off with about 20 hours a week. They can either work outdoors in our landscaping crew or they can work indoors in our commercial kitchen that we have. And during that time, they're getting used to working again, living in community, having a roof overhead having all their essential needs provided by Bridge House and start earning money and saving money. And so by the end of that year, they've got you know a nest egg built up in their savings account that we set up with them. Um, they've got some skills uh, of the work that they've been doing, but most importantly, hopefully they've got some self-esteem back and some sense of what it's like living around other people, working again, and feeling that they have a sense of meaning and purpose in their life. Because that's the change, that's the psychological change that needs to happen 
if they're then going to sustain it further. And so we place a lot of emphasis on aftercare out of, after they're out of the program. So like I said, it's a year-long program, and then we're aiming to, for them to graduate. Graduate means they get their own full-time job and their own apartment or other housing situation, and then they're back out into the community. You know, they're part of all of our community then. Um, and we've got, not only do we have a 75% graduation successful rate, but then over 80% of the people after the first year post-graduation are still retaining their job and their housing. So it's a really successful program for the right person at the right time in their life. Um, and it also incorporates a lot of social enterprise. So I mentioned that they could be working in a commercial kitchen. Well, when they're working in the kitchen, they're not just chopping food to feed to other people experiencing homelessness. They're doing that because then that food goes to our other programs that we serve to the population. But they also, we have a whole catering company. We have cafes that we've opened up, like this one right here, our Community Table Kitchen Cafe. We're at BCH, the, the, the hospital here in Boulder, um, and we just opened up this beautiful kitchen. We'll take you in, in, or cafe. We'll take you inside in a moment to show it to you. But this is where you can have breakfast or lunch, you know, wraps, salads, paninis, uh, sandwiches, and support a mission. So it's great food, but all the money that we make is then going back into the mission of supporting this population. It's literally getting people off the streets back into a working and housed lifestyle. And the thing I like to really mention to people so that they really understand, it's a year-long program again. It's not a quick fix. This takes some time to really change people's psychology. When you're in a downward spiral living on the streets, it takes a while to get out of that. Not just with all the logistical things and economically, but psychologically. And so we really set up the program to build in success. Every chance they can have to succeed, we're gonna give it to them because we want to see them succeed in this. And so if they mess up, if something happens, we're not a one and done kind of place. It's like we're gonna give them another chance. There'll be, there'll be consequences and repercussions of their actions. But sometimes it's the second or third time they see, wow, you didn't give up on me. You know, you stayed with me. And believe it or not, I mean, it might sound a little hokey, but, but it really makes a difference. And it really lets people come through it and feel a sense of self-resilience. Um, that's, that's what we're aiming for. Isn't that incredible? So two of the things that really struck me in what you shared is first to help people discover that their lives have meaning, that their lives have purpose, and what a difference that could make for all of us, really, no matter where we are in life. I know that I feel like I can fly, like I have wind under my wings when I have a sense of meaning and purpose. And the second is that here we are, and you've partnered with BCH here with this cafe and marketplace, and it gives firsthand evidence about the power of interdependence, that as a community, we thrive when we thrive together, and we learn how we can support each other with our gifts and with our innovative ideas. It's been essential. You know, we've had partnerships with, like, Europa and CU and... I mean, so many different businesses and so many different faith groups who volunteer and they donate and they support us in various ways. I mean, even uh, Congregation Har Hashem helps to house, provide housing for some of our graduates uh, who then pay them rent. But they're willing to take a chance and say, okay, we will rent out X number of, of houses that we have on our property to help your graduates move on afterwards. And they're just blown away by the results. So you're right, it, it's the cooperation, the synergy that happens through that that really makes a difference. That's where the power of community really mm. needs to come in to help solve this issue of homelessness. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Well, now we're going to walk into this cafe yeah. and marketplace. So we're going to put our masks on, and I just want to give a pan. You've got the mountain view here. So the hospital's right over there. The hospital's over there. there. And they've got great little cafe tables, and they're open even now. So if you want to support this entire endeavor, you can come here and you can work. They've got Wi-Fi. You can sit out at the cafe. It's 30 to 2 o'clock, Monday through Friday. 
is when the cafe is open. So that's 6 30 to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. You can come and enjoy Ozo coffee and there even the Bridge House's uh, ready to work goodies. Everything that they had that was like a brownie and a cookie, they've made. And here, here's the kicker. The, the couple workers that we're going to see behind the uh, cafe here used to be homeless. Okay, so the, the manager who's in here used to be experiencing homelessness. We hired him after he graduated because he was so good. And I think one of the other pre people is a current trainee in the program who one day is going to graduate. So we sometimes we hire the people as we expand and give them opportunities. Some of our best employees used to be on the streets. So that's just exciting to see. So yeah, we'll just walk in really briefly and show you in here. Thank you. I'll grab this for you. So Thank you. I see. Hanging outside. <laughs> that. No, I was not thinking so clearly on that one. Come on in. So walk in here and you can even come in and get a little air conditioning as you want to order your coffee or treat. And see, so this is brand new. We opened up, well, we actually opened up the first week of March of this year. Ha, ha, ha. We had to close uh, two weeks later. But we reopened uh, the second week of June, and you can see it's just spick and span, brand new. There's even some seating area down there where you're looking now, and around to the left, around a the corner there. Uh, and, I mean, you could just see there's wraps, paninis, quesadillas, Moe's bagels we work with, Ozo coffee. Uh, so it's just waiting for you here. Oh, and one other thing I want to show you over here, too. One of our other social enterprises that we do in the kitchen are these, these are brownies, Danconia oh, yeah. truffle brownies. And these are the best brownies you will ever taste. You can have small packages or, you know, more or less in our kitchen. Boulder, near the Boulder Dinner Theater is where the kitchen is located. These are incredible brownies that are great gifts. And what you're looking at there is some of our sorts of different uh, things that we're up to as a social <laughs> enterprise to let our trainees do while they're there and then to interact with the public. So like we interact with a lot of corporations for these brownies because they're just such great gifts. And that is a fantastic way that supports our programs. And people love, love the food. So as we bring our interview to a close, how can people learn more about the Ready to Work program and or the Bridge House? And if they want to get involved, like donate something or be a volunteer? Exactly. So let's just step this way a little. Let people coming in. Uh, so boulderbridgehouse.org, boulderbridgehouse.org. That's our website, our main website. And from there, you can learn everything. You can learn about the Community Table Kitchen. And that'll show you, you know, our cafe, our, we have a take and bakes that you can order as well that feed a family of four. Really delicious food for 15 to $20. Very affordable and you do as pickup or we can deliver to you. So that whole menu is right there. All the information about Ready to Work program is there. And then other ways you can help support whether you want to volunteer. Uh, that would put you in touch with me, which would be great. Or um, if you want to donate, items or financially all that information is there so there's some really nice videos about the ready to work program also that will explain that too thank you thank you ah, awesome thank you so much scott that was yeah. really awesome and the reason that i am here interviewing scott is because the bridge house is partnering with us for our event number three in the summer sundown music and talk series and for the music and talk that happen on August 6th, that's event number three, we have the Longmont Symphony Brass Quintet. And the follow discussion will be with Tim Arnold, who works as a manager for the Ready to Work program. The topic is a challenging one. All five of the topics we chose are ones that we can be really uncomfortable talking about, but the purpose of the discussion is so we can demystify it and let it be a safe place to think more deeply, to shift our perspectives, and to feel that we can open up a conversation. And that topic that I will be talking with Tim about is mental health and social stigma. So join us August 6th, and you can learn more at hopeforlongmont.org and click on the events page. And you can learn more about Bridge House there, too. There's a click-through. Blessings, everybody. Goodbye. Great to be with you. Bye. See you soon. <laughs>